Hey, I'm Grinning Infoli, and this is Long Live the Queen. Now, let's study composure and elegance so that they get closer to 25 and we can up presents even more and attempt to go to the royal treasury to get our magical crystal. I believe we need a presence of 70 or an accounting of 70 to pull that off. I have played it before, as I said. I know a few things. You practice positive thinking, maintaining a good self-image and conditioning yourself to carry on rather than be frustrated by any past misstep. Gotta move on, baby. You practice sitting calmly while your teacher circles around you and makes unexpected loud noises at random intervals. That, see what I did there? It was, it was topical. Okay. Now, elegance. You practice walking along a narrow rail, taking each step carefully and focusing on your balance. Oh, this is the whole, like, uh, teacup on your head thing or book on your head thing that you see in Disney movies on occasion. Or maybe My Fair Lady, an older movie. Remember that the festival of the good lady is approaching. There will be public celebrations for the commoners, followed by a grand gala for the nobility. Oh, better, I better take note of that. As queen, you would be expected to lead the procession and take part in the ceremonial planting, possibly give a speech. However, since you are not yet crowned, it is not required, and it may not be safe to expose you to the public. What do you mean, not safe? Outside of the castle, you are less well protected. If anyone means you harm, think that hot now and decide later. I'm really, I screwed up his voice. I'm going to commit to it. Won't happen again, don't you worry. Committed to it. There is a letter for you as well. It's from Brienne. I went to school with her, but she's a couple years older than me. Her mother is the Duchess of Mead. She's complaining that her mother still won't let her come home for the holidays. Apparently, her uncle Kavan has been acting strangely lately and shouting at shadows. Weird. Crazy man. She's bored and looking for an adventure. Well, I don't have any to suggest to her. Oh, okay. Guess you don't really like her that much, Elodie, huh? All right, what do we do? We want to we wanna stay yielding. We want to get less depressed, maybe less angry. Less depressed is the main thing, so more cheerful if we can. Angry, that'll make us cheerful, but yielding and lonely as well, which will... Uh, it'll kind of put us really low on the yielding, and it'll hard to get, hard, be hard to get back. But uh, I think that's what we're going to have to do. Yeah, yielding, lonely, cheerful. We'll play with our toys. You spend the weekend holed up alone in your room with your favorite toys. It's childish, but you feel a bit better. Looking appropriately yielding to learn the merits of presence. All right, now elegance and then presence. And we, after we do elegance over 25, we will overcome that cap of 50. Awesome. So that's what we're going to do. Elegance. Presence. Bam. You practice standing and walking with books balanced on your head. Oh, I called it. I said that earlier. You practice the elegant way to hold and sip from a teacup. Your pinky slightly extended for balance. That's why they extend the pinky? I mean, I thought it was like, in, in, the, uh, in the words of Patrick Starfish, the further you extend that pinky, the fancier you are. Ooh, a new outfit. A presence-based outfit. Interesting. You practice focusing your attention on individuals as you pass, letting them feel a brief connection with you before you formally acknowledge them with a nod. You practice being aware of your environment, seeing everything as it transpires around you, and feeling that you are in control of it all. All right, I'm late. The present. These are good exercises. They're kind of subjective exercises, and the professor has no way of know if I'm actually doing it or just sitting there staring at something. But uh, I'm sure she's a trained professional, and she's teaching me well. Today is the procession and planting for the Festival of the Good Lady. Will you be leading the parade? If you have any concerns about your safety, please stay here. The people will recover from disappointment. If we lose you, there is no recovering. I will lead the parade. I will, pr lead, I will, I will parade and make a speech. I would rather not go. I don't have any public speaking, so I would fail that. So I'll just lead it. I think my presence will pull it off for me. 
I'm not afraid, Dad. Being all paranoid, making me... Yeah, you're, you're coddling me. I'm a queen, damn it. Stop coddling me. I'm not afraid. I'm going to be the best parade leader ever. My little girl. You prepare your best gown for the occasion, then walk slowly through the town with your attendants. It would not be appropriate for you to wear a sword, but you do walk with a sturdy golden scepter that's taller than you are. Decoration failed, elegance failed. Dang. Oh. The end of the ride. Oh, I thought presence would affect this. Man, decoration and elegance. I just failed. At the end of the route, you help the priestesses turn over the earth for the new tree to be planted. Then the new life is blessed, and all the attendants join in song. The procession regroups to return to the castle. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Well, let's see. I'm, I'm good yielding, but I could stand to be a little yes, less yielding. No, no, I, I think it's good. I got, I got to be careful. Care of plus one angry. Um, nope. Minus one angry. Yeah, awesome. Plus one depressed, plus one afraid. Minus plus one lonely, plus one afraid. Lonely is what I want. Lonely and afraid. Perfect. That way when I switch over to the medicine, I'll be prepared. Lonely and afraid. You wander through the parts of the castle where other people rarely visit, but find little except spider webs. Yuck. Alright, what skills should we go into? We're good on presence, I think. Um, oh, we can stand and put another point. It would max out if we put another point in it. And I oh, probably shouldn't have been yielding, because that's kind of a waste now of the bonus. Alright, we'll do presence and dance. Yeah, presence and dance. Okay. Classes, presence, and we are going to a ball tomorrow, right? That's that's what's happening. So might as well learn some dance. Presence and where is my dance button? My dance is in agility and some dance. Good. You practice giving commands to the castle staff, neither asking nor demanding, but telling them what needs to be done. As long as you believe it to be true, they will as well. You practice watching people and willing them to feel you ga your gaze on them. Inevitably, they will be drawn to you. Interesting. Okay. You begin practicing dance steps in time to music, quick and slow, turning and weaving. You work through the standard repertoire of ballroom dancing, being sure you know the basic steps for any dance likely to be required of you in a social setting. You may now attend ballroom dancing on the weekends. Yeah! So I just learned the basics of dancing in time for the dance. Awesome. Are you ready for the grand ball? All the nobles in the domain are here to see you, to see their queen. Gulp. You finish dressing and descend the stairs to make a grand entrance. All around, the rich and powerful pause in their activities to gaze upon you, the ruler of them all. Ooh. Success, finally, presence, good. You let your eyes rest upon each in turn as you have been taught, impressing upon them that you are not a child, but a queen. Your father waits for you at the bottom of the stairs and offers you his arm. The first dance is for us. He guides you gently around the dance floor, never rushing you. It's fun to dance with your father, but the look in his eyes is so sad. After this, you must choose your own partner. There are a number of men who hope to catch your eye. The Duke of Kiggle alone has brought three eligible sons, all near your age. You look around the room at all your possible partners, which is to say, everyone. No one may begin dancing until you do. You can pick whomever you want, and you will not be denied. Hmm. My age, younger, older, already married, scandalous. Um, uh, we'll, we'll keep, we'll be, we'll, we'll do the conventional thing. My age, sure, why not? Someone about my age. You approach Lin Li, the second son of the Duke of Kiggle. He's about two years older than you, and he was always nice to you at school. He bows to you with great courtesy, and you begin to dance. Dancing with a real partner feels quite different from dancing with your father. You knew him, knew his steps like a part of you. Now every move is a mystery. Partial success, I forgot about those. Partial successes are also blue, they're, they're basically half successes. You have been tutored in dance, of course, as has your partner, and it is simple enough to move through the motions without mishap. 
Between the dances, there is time for the guests to mingle, chat, and sample tiny bites of exquisite food. Court manners and flattery failed. Darn. During a law in the music, Banyan, the Duke of Marie, taps an elegant fingernail against a wine glass, letting the clear note ring out through the room. If I might have your... If I might have your attention, I believe we should offer our compliments to our lovely hostess. Not only does she protect our borders, but she has begun to address the long-standing problem of a shortage of heirs. My sister is proud to do her duty, as of course are others, such as myself and our lovely new queen. You can almost hear the chorus of eyebrows being raised. May I have this dance, fair lady? Oh, I've never seen this before. Oh, refuse, accept, refuse or accept. Yeah, I'll accept, why not? Accept. Certainly. He pulls you close, his hand possessive on your waist, as the orchestra swings back into motion. His head above yours angles down to murmur words that, you hope, no one else can hear. You realize that you have just admitted to all your guests that you and I are having an affair. What? If you don't marry me now, your virtue will be stained. That's not fair. It is really not close. This, fuck this guy. This guy's a... Ugh. Oh, fuck you. Little in life is fair, your highness. Was it fair to force my sister to marry her enemy? Hey, I'm the queen. I need heirs and so do you. I am the highest ranking eligible man in the domain. You clearly could not wed your own father or uncle. Young Elith is still a child. And the Duke of Kiggle is happily married. I am the only match worthy of you. Oh, but yielding and project keeps... Oh, oh, I don't get to pick? You have, you have a point. You are, of course, too young to marry until after your coronation. You will need time to prepare. Don't be sad. I want what's best for both of us and our domain. Oh, ugh! No! Oh, come on! I wanted to deny him. I'm breaking that off if the opportunity comes up. As the gala continues, you take the opportunity to observe nobles that you rarely see. There's Gwinnell, for instance, the young lady of Sudbury, only months older than you and due to finally inherit control of her duchy soon. Or Adele, the youngest daughter, not, not that Adele, although I do enjoy her music, the youngest daughter of the Duchess of Lila and a fierce sportswoman. She was a few years ahead of you at school and the absolute terror of the ball fields. No Brienne. She had said her parents were leaving her stuck at school this season. Her parents are here, dancing together the Duke Consort clutching his Duchess possessively tight. Strange that there's no sign of your cousins, though. Shouldn't they be here? Your aunt and uncle are here, of course. It would be scandalous if they hadn't come, Merva being so close by. Hmm. Oh, someone's magic. Someone's hiding some stuff. It's nice to be able to enjoy time with friends and family, isn't it? But I don't have the skill to detect said magic. All right, well, I think that's all the time we have for now. I'm Grinning Infilly. This is Long Live the Queen. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Later, later.